I welcome you all for uh, today's uh, lecture module 3 and lecture 6. In this uh, lecture uh, we will be studying about uh, limit gauging, what is the meaning of uh, limit gauging, why it is uh, necessary and uh, then uh, what are the various uh, kinds of uh, gauges used, how they are uh, manufactured uh, and what are the materials selected for uh, manufacture of gauges and uh, what are the precautions to be taken uh, while using uh, gauges and uh, the different kinds of gauges used uh, for checking external features like uh, uh, diameter, uh, depth etcetera, etcetera. Also what are the various gauges used uh, for measuring, uh, for checking uh, holes and then also we will study different types of gauges like uh, pitch gauge, radius gauge, etcetera. Also, we will study about uh, air gauge and then uh, we will move to the design of uh, limit gauges. Now, let us start the lecture, uh, let us understand what is uh, limit uh, gauging. Now, in uh, the mass production, the components are manufactured in uh, large quantities and uh, many a times uh, it is not needed to check uh, the dimension of each and every component and uh, if we can uh, just check whether the work pieces are within the prescribed uh, limits, upper limit and lower uh, limit that will be enough and there will not be any need to check uh, the actual uh, size of uh, components using uh, measuring instruments. In such cases to check whether the components are uh, within uh, the prescribed limit, we use uh, the gauge uh, instruments called uh, limit uh, gauges. Now, uh, what is the advantage of this uh, limit gauging? Since uh, we are not measuring the actual size of uh, the component and then we will be using only gauges, the inspection of the parts will be very quick and costs associated with uh, the inspection will also be less. Now, uh, what are uh, gauges? These are inspection tools without a scale, there will not be any scale built into the gauges. They check the dimension of the manufactured uh, parts and they will tell the status whether the workpiece is acceptable or whether it is uh, uh, acceptable or not, only that information it will uh, give and uh, the actual size uh, will not be uh, given by the gauges. Now, how these uh, gauges are uh, classified. There are many uh, ways in which these uh, gauges are classified based upon the standard, uh, the type of uh, uh, limit gauge whether it is standard gauge or uh, limit gauge, uh, they are classified and then based upon the use or purpose whether they are used for uh, working gauges or uh, for inspection purpose or uh, for reference or uh, master gauges. Depending upon the elements uh, to be checked, they are uh, classified as gauges checking for uh, holes and then gauges uh, check, uh, used for checking the shafts, tapers, threads and different kinds of uh, forms. And then according to the shape of the gauges, they are classified as uh, plug gauge like uh, full form plug gauge, segmental uh, plug gauge and then uh, ring gauges, snap gauges, taper gauges, thread gauges form gauges and also thickness uh, gauges. Now, according to their design, uh, they are classified like uh, whether they are uh, single uh, limit gauges or double limit gauges, single ended, double ended or progressive uh, gauges, whether they are fixed gauge or adjustable uh, gauges, whether they are uh, replaceable gauges or uh, reversible gauges. Uh, if there is any indicating uh, uh, mechanism is there, they are called indicating uh, gauges and also uh, if air is used for gauging purpose, we say air gauges and according to the type of uh, work uh, surface that is checked, they are classified as uh, plain uh, work uh, surface gauges 
thread, uh, threaded uh, gauges, then the spline gauges and then the uh, keyway gauges. Now, uh, what are the gauge uh, materials used for manufacture of uh, gauges? A different kind of uh, uh, materials are used uh, like uh, high carbon uh, steel and then uh, sometimes mild steel is also used, case hardened uh, steel is used, oil hardened uh, steel, cast iron is also used and sometimes glass and ceramic and invar are also used. And uh, while selecting these uh, gauge materials, there are some uh, selection criteria like the material should be wear resistant. Since uh, the gauge comes in contact with the work part and uh, there is sliding motion, the uh, gauge material should have uh, wear uh, resistant uh, property and uh, the stability to preserve uh, form and uh, size, the shape, geometric shape of uh, the gauge and then size of the gauge should be uh, should not alter because of changes in the environment. So, stability aspect is also considered and very important thing is gauge, gauges should be corrosion uh, resistant. Since the gauges come in contact with the working uh, environment like uh, they come in contact with the coolant, uh, oil etcetera, etcetera, uh, there should not uh, be any corrosion on the uh, surface of the gauge. So, uh, corrosion resistant materials are selected for manufacture of gauges. Also, the machinability of the gauge material is uh, very, very important. It should be possible to machine to the required size and required shape to the requir required accuracy level. So, the uh, gauge material that is selected should have good uh, machinability and also it should be thermally stable. Sometimes uh, it comes in contact with higher temperatures like 40, 50, 60 degrees Celsius. The size of uh, the gauge should not alter. So, it should have sufficient uh, thermal uh, stability. Now, uh, sometimes uh, the plating is also made on the gauge uh, surfaces. For example, uh, uh, say we have a gauge uh, surface like this. So, this is the surface of the gauge. And then, uh, this is the gauging surface and this is also gauging surface. Now, uh, in order to improve the wear uh, resistance, some kind of uh, coating can be provided on these uh, gauging uh, surfaces, a coating like chrome plating and then uh, carbide uh, coating, narbide coating, sapphire tips are also used uh, at this uh, uh, place. And then uh, carbide, uh, uh, the advantage of carbide plating is it increases the life of gauge by 5 times as compared to the uh, only steel uh, uh, gauges and uh, carbide tips if we are using uh, a carbide tip can be uh, mounted on this uh, which will increase the service life of uh, the gauge by 10 to 100 uh, times and uh, tin uh, plating right, titanium nitrate plating is also provided on the gauging surface so that uh, the service life uh, enhances. Now, uh, uh, coming to the manufacture of uh, gauges, uh, initially the proper uh, material uh, should be selected and then uh, machining to size. Initial machining is uh, made like turning operation or milling operation if it is flat surface uh, with uh, some allowance, machining is to be performed and then uh, heat treatment of, uh, if it is steel material, some uh, kind of heat treatment is uh, required to increase the hardness to uh, 58 to 60 uh, Rockwell C and then tempering is also performed on the material uh, to get uh, the stability. And in uh, sometimes uh, sub zero treatment uh, that is uh, the uh, gauge uh, uh, blanks are placed at minus uh, 80 degrees Celsius uh, for uh, long term uh, stability. And then case hardening uh, by carburizing also is sometimes uh, performed on the gauges to improve the hardness of uh, the gauging surfaces. So, in that case, case depth of uh, 0.7 millimeter uh, may be required. So, after this uh, heat treatment, the gauging surfaces are uh, ground and then uh, they are lopped and all sort of finishing operations are uh, performed. And then uh, 
uh, if plating is required plating is also performed and then again after the plating is over again uh, they are uh, uh, ground and uh, lapped to get the proper uh, size. And then after uh, the finishing uh, is over we need to calibrate for example, if you take uh, a snap gauge like this. So, what is the distance between these two surfaces? This is very important. So, now we say we have finished the, the these two surfaces and uh, what is the uh, what is our requirement whether it is uh, uh, 10.001 millimeter or 10.005 millimeter we, we should fix up some uh, size here whether we have really achieved that uh, uh, requirement uh, we have to check uh, by using uh, uh, slip gauges. And then after calibration is uh, over uh, we have to mark uh, the specifications like uh, uh, what is the go size uh, limit and uh, what is the go no go size limit and uh, uh, which side is uh, if it is some progressive uh, type like this then one is uh, the go limit and other one is uh, no go limit. So, one corresponds to the upper uh, size of the work piece and the other one corresponds to the lower limit of the work piece. So, in that case we have to properly mark the go and uh, no go and also the manufacturer uh, details the brand, brand uh, the manufacturer name is also uh, marked on the gauge and then final uh, inspection uh, should be carried out in the, with respect to the uh, size of uh, the uh, marking of size of the gauges and uh, whether all uh, the details are provided or not the like uh, the tolerance what is the tolerance and uh, what is the which side, side is go which side is no go all such uh, things uh, should be marked uh, properly and uh, uh, so, the inspection is carried out to check all those details and finally, they are uh, uh, packed. Now, uh, what are the features of uh, fixed uh, gauges? So, these uh, uh, fixed limiting uh, gauge that means, uh, the size cannot be altered. There are some uh, limit gauges wherein some slight adjustment uh, can be made they are known as uh, adjustable uh, gauges. We will be studying uh, about uh, those, de those uh, adjustable gauges uh, in a short while. So, fixed uh, limit gauging is most cost effective method of checking parts since uh, the time taken to check the part is very less. So, what the operator will do he will take the uh, work piece he will clean the work piece surface and he will take the gauge and you will take the clean the gauge surface and uh, you will try to insert the work piece into the gauge. If it uh, uh, enters the go side and if it does not enter the no go side then uh, the work piece is uh, accepted like that. So, no actual size is uh, measured in uh, the gauging uh, system. So, the inspection will be uh, very uh, fast and then uh, it requires uh, very little training since uh, the uh, gauges are uh, very simple to use and not much detailed training is required to train the operators and uh, unskilled uh, workers uh, can be can use the gauges and they can uh, check uh, the work pieces and no recording of the part size no measurement is made and no recording of uh, the work piece is made we just uh, say whether the work piece is acceptable or not and uh, the quick uh, ch checking of the parts and all these gauges uh, they are traceable to ISO standards and then uh, different kinds of uh, coating is possible to enhance uh, the life uh, service life of uh, the gauges and then uh, also custom built uh, gauges can be made depending upon the requirement of the user and very important thing is uh, in order to use these gauges there is no external power needed only manpower the operator takes the gauges and he checks uh, the work pieces no external uh, power uh, require is required except air gauges where uh, pneumatic uh, uh, air supply is required. Then uh, let us uh, move to the various uh, kinds of uh, gauges. Now, uh, what is the meaning of this uh, standard uh, gauge? 
So, it is nothing but a mating part, mating part is used as a gauge. For example, say we have a work piece like this with a hole. with some uh, mean uh, dimension of x. So, the mean size of this uh, hole is x. Now, there will be a meet, mating part for this particular uh, hole, a shaft again with the same uh, mean uh, size. So, the mating part itself is used as a gauge to check whether the hole is proper uh, or not, but in actual practice uh, what we check uh, using limit gauges is uh, whether the work piece is within the allowable limit. Some tolerance is given to the work pieces and there will be an upper uh, limit for the work piece and there is a lower limit for the work piece. So, that status uh, we have to check. So, this uh, concept of uh, standard gauge uh, wherein uh, both the, the uh, hole and shaft or the work piece of the gauge they are may, uh, made to permit the mean uh, size. So, this concept is only a theoretical uh, concept and it is not used in uh, practice. Now, uh, let us move to the other uh, types of uh, limit uh, gauges. So, this uh, shows uh, a double ended uh, plane plug gauge. Plane means the surface that is to be checked is plane, that means there are no threads. So, it is called uh, the plane uh, plug gauge. Uh, so, this is uh, used as a plug. So, we say it is a plug gauge. Since uh, the two gauging surfaces are there, so this is the, the first one, uh, first gauging surface and this is the second gauging surface. So, we say and they are uh, mounted on both sides of the handle. This red part is the handle. So, the gauges are uh, mounted on uh, both the ends of the handle. So, we say this is a double ended plane plug gauge. Now, what we should understand here, uh, there are uh, two uh, gauging uh, ends. So, this uh, corresponds to the maximum uh, material limit that is uh, this is go gauge. So, this is used for uh, checking uh, the holes. So, go gauge uh, corresponds to the maximum uh, uh, material uh, limit and then the no go gauge corresponds to the uh, minimum uh, material uh, limit or uh, here this is used to check what is the minimum size of the hole and this is used to check the maximum size of the hole. And we can see here the go end, go end is longer than the no go end. See how we use this uh, to check the work piece, we, we will be having a uh, a work piece uh, with a hole and there will be always uh, some tolerance. So, this is the tolerance uh, for the work piece. Now, we take this uh, plug gauge and we try to insert go side. So, this is go side, this uh, portion we try to enter, go should enter the hole. So, when it enters then we remove it and then we try to insert no go part, okay? no go side of the gauge, no go side we try to insert into the hole, no go should not enter into the hole. Now, you can see here no go it is slightly greater than the upper limit. So, this no go will not enter that means when go enters into the hole and no go does not enter then that uh, hole is acceptable, that work piece with that particular hole is acceptable. Then uh, what are the other things, uh, here you can see uh, this is uh, 25 H 7. So, 25 is the basic size and then H 7 is the tolerance. So, basic size is also mentioned on the handle of uh, the gauge and uh, the what is the tolerance that is allowed that is also mentioned and actual values are also mentioned. Since uh, this is h the basic uh, the fundamental deviation is 0. So, the basic size will be equal to the uh, lower uh, size of the hole, lower limit of the hole will be equal to the basic size. So, this is exactly 25 millimeter. 
and uh, the see the exact 25 millimeter it is always uh, very difficult to manufacture. So, some uh, uh, allow, some tolerance is also provided for manufacture of gauges uh, they are called gauge tolerance they, this we will see after uh, some time and you can see here this is plus 21 that means the diameter of this is equal to 25.021 millimeter that means uh, when compared to the basic size this is greater by 0 0.021 millimeter and we can also observe one more thing the manufacturer name is uh, marked here. So, all these things are uh, as per uh, Indian uh, standard IS uh, 3484. So, what should be the length and what should be the length of uh, this no go portion, what should be the uh, diameter at this place, what should be the diameter at this place, uh, what should be the length of uh, the handle all those things are specified in this uh, IS 3484. So, they are made as per this IS uh, 3484 and uh, 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 most of the times uh, a red mark is provided on no go side. So, no go is uh, marked on the handle as well as red paint is provided at this place to indicate that it is no go side. Now, uh, we can observe one more thing here in the handle we have a hole here. So, this is uh, called taper lock renewable end. So, this first red gauge it is taper lock renewable end. What is the meaning of uh, taper lock? See here this uh, double ended uh, uh, the, this particular uh, gauging portion it will have a tapered shank, it will have a tapered shank and there will be a mating uh, taper in the handle. So, what we have to do? we have to press this uh, uh, gauging uh, gauge into this uh, taper in the uh, handle and then we have to press it. So, that uh, it gets fixed into the uh, handle Then how do we remove it say we want to uh, after some time this is worn out and we want to uh, replace it with new one. So, that is why it is called renewable end. So, what we have to do is we have to take a drift or a tapered uh, uh, part and we have to push it here into the hole and in that case this uh, uh, gauge, gauge uh, will come out and then uh, uh, we can insert a rod to remove uh, this uh, no go end and then new uh, ends can be mounted on this uh, uh, handle. That means, handle can be reused and coming to this, this is solid type. You can see here the handle and then go gauge and no go gauge all are uh, uh, made in a single uh, unit. So, this is a solid type uh, plug gauge. If the size nominal size is uh, less we can go for uh, solid type. If nominal size is more like 25, 30, 35 then we, we go for uh, uh, renewable taper lock renewable uh, type. And uh, uh, what is the range of availability they are available if it is carbide, carbide coated or carbide uh, uh, um, uh, gauges then uh, the range is up to 2 millimeter to 40 millimeter they are available and if it is hardened steel from 2 millimeter to 250 millimeter uh, uh, diameter uh, uh, gauges uh, they are available. Also if special special, special requirement is there uh, they can be built uh, as per uh, the customers uh, requirement. Now, in the case of uh, go no go end that is double ended type what happens is we have to take the work piece where for in which there is a hole which is to be checked we have to take the double ended uh, uh, plug gauge we have to insert go side and then we have to remove that gauge and then we have to insert the no go. So, like this uh, the time taken to gauge uh, the work piece or the hole will be more. So, to save time progressive uh, gauges are uh, made you can see here there are two portions with the handle this is the go gauge. So, this diameter corresponds to the go limit and uh, this one corresponds to the no go limit. So, in one insertion in one insertion inspection of the hole can be completed that means, uh, time uh, for uh, checking the hole can be saved and another uh, uh, if the 
hole size is very less like 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter like that, then we say pin gauges, pin gauges are uh, used and you can see here this is the handle okay, and uh, there is a, a green color is used. So, this will indicate that this portion is go, it is also marked here go side is marked and also the color indicates that this is go and then we have red color here which indicates that this portion is no go and uh, the limits are also what is the exact sizes are also mentioned here this is uh, this diameter is uh, 12.80 millimeter and this diameter is uh, 12.9 millimeter and sometimes if uh, the uh, hole uh, that is to be checked is a big one like uh, say uh, 250 millimeter or 350 millimeter 300 millimeter it is a big uh, hole in that case what happens is if we use a, a full form gauge that means uh, the plug gauge with full form round uh, gauge then it becomes very heavy. So, using that heavy gauge uh, becomes uh, difficult. So, in such cases segmental flat type gauges are uh, used they look like this now this is the segmental gauge with the handle now you can see here full round form is not used. So, this much uh, is removed and only we are using a segment part of uh, that full form. So, we, they are called uh, segmental since they are flat pieces uh, flat type uh, gauges. The advantage is uh, the material that is required is less and the weight is less so that uh, the operator can comfortably use them. Also if the di uh, diameter of the hole uh, to be uh, checked is large then we always go for single ended uh, uh, plug gauges in order to reduce the weight of the gauge. So, we use uh, one uh, uh, gauge for checking the uh, upper limit and one more gauge for uh, checking uh, the lower limit. So, they are called single ended uh, plug gauges. Now, uh, we can uh, see some details of plug gauges up to 10 millimeter solid type double ended uh, plug gauges uh, are made and then from 10 millimeter to 30 millimeter uh, taper lock uh, double ended uh, plug gauges are made in which case uh, the ends can be uh, renewed when uh, the ends are uh, worn out new uh, ends can be uh, replaced. From uh, 30 to 63 millimeter fastened type double ended uh, plug gauges are used they are not taper lock they are the ends are fastened to the handle and then from 63 to 100 millimeter single ended uh, plug gauges are used. So, we need to have two gauges one for go limit and uh, go and other uh, no go and from 100 to 250 millimeter flat type single ended uh, segmental type uh, plug gauges are uh, used and above 250, 250 and above uh, a rod type uh, gauges or pin gauges are used with uh, spherical uh, ends they look like they say we have uh, to check uh, a big hole and the diameter of this is say 300 uh, millimeter. So, diameter is 300 millimeter in such cases uh, if we use full form gauge it will be very very heavy. So, what uh, the uh, the practice is to use uh, pin gauges with uh, spherical uh, ends like this. So, the length of this is controlled there will be one pin for go uh, the lower limit and one uh, pin for uh, upper limit. So, we have to insert it and then uh, we have to uh, rotate it or we have to remove it and again we have to insert uh, like this some two three times we have to do like this. like this. So, these are called uh, pin uh, gauges they will be very light uh, in weight. So, easily operator can uh, use them. Now, what are the limitations of uh, plug gauges? Sometimes uh, the 
all conditions like uh, tapered hole, bell mouth or out of round hole, uh, it will be very difficult to distinguish. So, it will be something uh, like this, say we have a work piece like this with uh, a hole uh, like this. So, it is tapered uh, sometimes it is uh, bell mouth like this, it is opened up like this. So, what the operator will do? He will take the plug gauge and he will just insert it. So, whether it is uh, tapered or whether it is bell mouth uh, and whether there is any out of roundness is there that will be very difficult uh, to check uh, by using uh, the plain uh, plug gauges. So, say we have a work piece uh, with a hole like this and then uh, we use the round uh, gauge. Now, you can see here it is entering, go is entering and not go is not entering, but uh, there is some ovality in the uh, hole. So, that cannot be checked by using uh, these uh, plug gauges. Then uh, gauging surfaces and uh, square edges, that means uh, the end of the plug gauge, it will be square. So, these square edges are unprotected, they are open and hence uh, they they must be handled and uh, stored carefully. If uh, the proper uh, protective coating is not applied, uh, the work, the gauging surfaces uh, may get corroded and they become unusable. And then uh, they have an easy tendency to roll off or uh, fall off uh, from the work bench. Since the work piece, the gauges are round they will uh, roll off from the table. So, proper uh, care should be taken to place them in a uh, proper place, so that they will not fall. If they fall, uh, then uh, the work uh, surface, the gauging surface may get affected and they become uh, unusable. And uh, they may get corroded if not properly protected from grease or oily uh, layer. Whenever uh, they are not used for a longer time, it is necessary that some uh, oily layer is pro put um, like petroleum jelly is put on the surface and then they should be stored, otherwise they will get corroded. And then gauge may freeze in the hole if worker exerts undue pressure on the gauge. This is very important. See, we should not force the gauges uh, into the hole. What happens if we force the gauge into the hole? It will enter, but it will deform the hole. The hole may expand. So, undue pressure uh, should not be uh, exerted. So, what uh, we, the operator should do? Say we have a hole like this and then the gauge side of the uh, go, go side of the plug gauge should be just uh, held here, so that it uh, moves inside without exerting any due to its own weight it should enter. So, that is the practice followed in the industry and undue pressure, if it is not entering undue pressure should not be exerted. And if required before using, uh, we may apply some uh, oil, thin oil, so that it easily flows uh, into the hole. And then, uh, the coming to the snap uh, gauges, these are used uh, for uh, checking uh, the uh, shafts, the size of the shaft. Uh, there are uh, two types, uh, one is uh, a fixed type uh, snap gauge, we can see here uh, this is a fixed type double ended, double ended because uh, one side uh, this is one uh, working side, this is another uh, working side. Okay. So, this is called uh, double ended fixed snap gauge okay. and here we have uh, an adjustable uh, snap gauge. What happens with uh, the fixed gauge? After uh, some usage, maybe after uh, uh, 1000 uh, times insertion or 2000 times insertion, the gauging surface is subjected to wear and the size will change. See here you can see it is marked 25 J 6, 25 is the basic size and J 6 is the tolerance that is allowed. So, actual size is also mentioned here minus 4 microns and plus 9 microns. So, here it is 25 
0 0.009 uh, millimeter this is go and then this is uh, minus 25 minus 0 0.004 so that is uh, no go side so due to continuous uh, usage uh, this is this this gap will change so in that case one thing is uh, we can uh, send these uh, gauges worn out gauges for repair that means again they will uh, coat uh, maybe chrome, pl uh, chrome plating or tin coating uh, tin coating they will do and again uh, they will uh, uh, repair it otherwise uh, say the uh, the tolerance itself changes the design uh, engineer will change the design itself uh, the tolerance itself in such cases uh, we cannot use uh, such cases whereas here the adjustable gauges can be uh, changed uh, if tolerance changes so these uh, annuals can be moved and they can be set to the new uh, required uh, sizes we can see here the arrangement is this is the long anvil we say this is fixed and here we have uh, movable anvils now how we can move we can see here the locking screws are there and here there will be a screw and one more screw for this so we have to unlock these uh, screws and we have to take uh, a screwdriver and we have to operate these screws so that these uh, anvils will move in and out and then using the slip cage uh, we can uh, fix we can uh, fix what is the size that is required for go and what is the size uh, that is required for uh, no go and then after fixing the sizes using slip cages uh, we have to uh, lock these two anvils by locking these screws and then these uh, all these screws are waxed so that unauthorized adjustments are not done somebody may take these gauges and they may unscrew uh, these screws and uh, they may adjust it so to avoid such uh, 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 things all the screws after making adjustments by proper authorized person they will uh, lock the screws and then they are waxed so while using this uh, uh, snap gauge uh, the operator should see whether the seal is in intact if it is not intact if it is disturbed then you should not use such cases they should be sent for calibration only after calibration and waxing they should be uh, again uh, used and again I can see here one more type uh, uh, different uh, type and this is the handle C we say since it is uh, looking like C, C type uh, snap uh, gauges another important thing is again see the, the workpiece will go here like this uh, for, uh, say go go side if you, the go side should smoothly enter into the shaft there should not be any over uh, pressure on the snap gauge if over pressure is applied then what happens is the this uh, these uh, uh, surfaces they move out they expand so it is very essential that uh, the gauges are not forced onto the workplace they should move uh, smoothly and this is another uh, fixed type uh, uh, snap gauge uh, uh, plate type plate type uh, snap gauge and uh, the adjustable gauges are useful uh, so that whenever the tolerance changes they can be adjusted also when the uh, anime, when the major gauging surfaces are worn out again we can adjust the gap so uh, wear adjustment is also possible uh, in adjustable uh, gauges by making adjustment uh, range of uh, diameters can be uh, inspected now uh, double ended uh, snap gauge uh, they are uh, available uh, within this range 3 to 100 uh, millimeter and if the uh, diameter of the shaft increases say it is uh, above 100 millimeter then we use a single ended uh, progressive uh, snap gauge so it looks uh, like this So this is a 
single ended that means this is go and this is no go that means the work piece will enter into go side this is go and this is uh, no go. So, work piece will not enter into this if that is the case uh, the work piece is uh, accepted. So, this is a progressive uh, snap gauge and the uh, single uh, uh, snap gauges are also available like uh, this. So, one uh, for go and similarly one for uh, no go like that uh, single uh, ended uh, snap gauges are also available single ended progressive uh, snap gauges are also available. Now, uh, let us conclude this uh, session in this lecture we discussed about uh, the meaning of gauging necessity of uh, limit gauging and then what are the various materials used to manufacture the gauges and what are the different uh, types of uh, gauges. We also learnt uh, about uh, the uh, plug gauges uh, different kinds of plug gauges and uh, snap gauges in the next class we will continue the discussion on different types of uh, limit gauges. Thank you.